All right, today we are going to be starting the story of Heracles. Heracles is better known by his Roman name, Hercules, and he is sort of the original superhero. I've heard him referred to as the hyperhero, and he's just this amazingly popular hero, both in myth and in modern times. There have been many, many TV shows, movies, cartoons, comic books, all about Heracles but usually under his Roman name, Hercules. And he was famous throughout the ancient world, from Greece to Rome, even into Egypt, where they had some stories about him. And because he spread so far for so long, his stories have many, many variations and differences. His origin story is different, uh, his adventures are different, but there are some similarities from tale to tale. And hopefully I won't get whacked in the back of the head with a stick while I tell the story. And hopefully the rain holds off so I can finish the story. Heracles was a demigod. And a demigod is a person who is part mortal, they have one mortal parent, and part immortal. They have one parent who is a god or a titan or some sort of uh, special magical immortal creature. And that is Heracles. And Heracles... His immortal parent was the most common immortal parent in all of myth, Zeus. Zeus had many, many, many demigod children. But he specifically went out to create the demigod of Heracles because he knew that there was a war coming up, a giant battle with the giants, of all things. Um, so there's just going to be this huge... Titanomachy, this huge fight with the giants, and he needed a champion for that. And that is why he wanted Heracles. And Zeus chose, as the mother for this child, for his future champion, Queen Alchemy of Thebes. And Queen Alchemy of Thebes was a descendant of Perseus. She was a granddaughter of Perseus. And she was married to Amphitryon of Argos. And Amphitryon of Argos was off on a mission, off on a quest, when Zeus came to her in disguise. Zeus came to Alchemy, and she was surprised because her husband wasn't expected to return for another day. And she welcomed him at the palace gate, she gave him a hug, they had dinner, they spent the evening together, but in the morning, Amphitryon was gone, and that was strange. But then, that night... Amphitryon returned, and she said to him, where did you go in the morning? It's like, what do you mean, where did I go in the morning? Um, I woke up in my camp, and I came here. He said, no, you woke up in our bed, and you disappeared. I, where were you? He said, no, I've been off on a quest, the one that you sent me on, and now I'm back. And they both looked at each other, and they went, Oh, because as descendants of Perseus, they kind of had a hunch what had happened, and they were right. And before too long, they realized that Alcmene was pregnant. And in the end, she actually gave birth to two children. She gave birth to twins. One of those twins was Heracles, who was the son of Zeus, and one of those twins was Iphicles, who was the son of Amphitryon. Now, Heracles was the only one who was a true demigod. Iphicles technically was because both his parents were descendants of the great hero Perseus, who was a demigod. But Heracles was the true demigod. He had the blood of Zeus in his veins. And he was destined for greatness. And he was also destined to have Hera hate him. Because she did not like that Zeus was spending time on Earth with another mortal princess. And, and so, in part to deal with that, they named him Heracles, which translates as the glory of Hera. Sort of trying to, you know, make it up to Hera and have her not hate him so much. It didn't work. And the evidence of that came very, very quickly. Because one day, Princess Alcmene, when both of her babies were still babies, she took a nap. And if you've ever been a parent... If you've ever had babies in the house, you know how rare those naps are. Both babies were finally asleep. 
and she laid them down in their cribs. And she went into the other room. She lay down upon a couch just to take a nap. She was exhausted. And she was woken from her nap by the sound of giggling. I was like, oh, my little baby has woken up. And so she snuck in to see what cute little things her babies were doing as they giggled in their crib. And when she peeked into the nursery, she screamed and fainted. Do you know why she screamed? Snakes. Snakes. There were snakes in the crib. There were two venomous snakes wrapping themselves around little baby Heracles. And she screamed and she fainted. And the guards and the handmaidens came running to see what was wrong. And do you know what they saw? Dead snakes. Dead snakes. That little baby Heracles with his little pudgy baby hands. Hey, can you hold up your hands for the camera? Yep. Those hands, those strong little hands had grabbed the snakes and squished them to death. And so, Alcmini had screamed because there are two live snakes in the baby's crib. And all the handmaidens screamed and the guards screamed because there are two dead snakes in the baby's crib. Okay, you can put your hands down now. Thank you, though. So, that was their first sign that Hera was not happy with Heracles. Are you climbing up on me? I do. <laughs> you do want to climb up? All right. Now, Heracles grew, and he was a Greek prince, and he was treated like a prince. But as a Greek prince, he did all the Greek prince things. He learned to fight. He learned to wrestle. He did sports. He did all sorts of athletic events. But he also needed to study. He was expected to know history. He was expected to know poetry. He was expected to know music. And Heracles was a bright, bright boy, but he didn't like school. He didn't like studying. He didn't like all that stuff. And so he was pretty miserable when he had to do it. And the thing he hated worst of all was music. Now, he loved listening to music, but he hated playing music. He just was not good at it, no matter how hard he tried. And another reason that he hated music was his music teacher a grumpy old man named Linus. And Linus didn't especially like young Heracles. He was very, very critical because he was stuck teaching this kid how to play music, and the kid was no good at music. And Linus did not make any secret of the fact that he thought Heracles was no good at music. And one day, when they were doing music, their music lessons, and Heracles had broken the strings on the lyre, with his two strong fingers for the 18th time, Linus began to yell at him and call him a clumsy oaf. How'd you think Heracles felt when that happened? <laughs> yeah, he didn't feel sad. He felt angry. He was the son of Zeus, after all. He's more inclined to anger than sadness. And so Heracles, in anger, lashed out. He swung his broken lyre out at Linus and smashed it across Linus's head shattering what was left of both the liar and Linus's head. Mm. And Linus fell dead on the floor. This wasn't good. It's not good to kill your music teacher, kids. And the rest of the tutors and the rest of the palace staff went to King Amphitryon and said, you have to do something about Heracles. He's going to hurt somebody. He may only be eight years old, but he's as strong as any of the men in the palace. And so Amphitryon... <laughs> Baby girl, you can't crawl across me quite so much, okay? Your head's getting in the way. They, uh, Amphitryon decided Heracles needed to be sent away. And so, to send him where he could do no harm, and where maybe his strength could do some good, Amphitryon sent Heracles to go live in the mountainside with all the shepherds. Hera loved this. She loved the idea of Zeus's glorious son having, yes, you can have some, of Zeus's glorious son having to live with the animals and the farmers in the dirt, being humiliated. You know who else loved this? Heracles. Because no more music lessons, no more history lessons, no more poetry. He got to just run around the countryside, chasing sheep, wrestling with the shepherds, fighting off bees that are blowing on my face. 
Uh, and he got to fight off lions and bears and wolves. And the shepherds loved having him there because he fought off the lions and the wolves and the bears. He would shoot them with arrows. He would fight them with clubs. And their sheep survived better than they ever had before. And this was a very good thing as far as the shepherds were concerned. And so, years passed. And Heracles was happy. And the shepherds were happy. And Alcmene and Phytrion were happy because their son was safe. But the time came when Alcmene said to Amphitryon, Heracles has grown enough. He knows his own strength now, and I miss my son. He needs to return to the palace. And so Heracles did return to the palace. And he returned with a hero's welcome because he had become famous for his strength and his athleticism. And, in fact, when he came back, he became the champion of... Thebes. He protected Amphitryon and Alchemy and their court. And every he became even more famous than he had been before. And that meant somebody noticed Heracles again. Do you know who noticed him again? Hera. Hera. Hera noticed that Heracles is back. And she decided, you know what? I think I need to pay him a special visit. And so one day, while Heracles was napping, and his wife, Megara, and his five sons were off playing in the palace. Heracles was napping, and Hera came to him, and she sent him a dream. And that dream drove him mad, drove him crazy, drove him insane. And when Heracles woke up from his nap in his family's quarters, he was horrified to see six monsters invading his family's quarters in the palace. So you know what he did to those monsters? He killed them. He drew his sword and he struck them down. One by one, he struck down the largest of the monsters first and then all five of the smaller monsters. But what? Let me guess, they're his family. They were his family. They weren't monsters at all. Hera had driven him mad, so he saw his wife and his children as monsters instead of what they really were. And so, Heracles, when the madness faded, was heartbroken because he had loved Megara. He had loved his sons. And he was utterly heartbroken. And Alcmene and Phytrion were heartbroken as well. Not only because they had lost their daughter-in-law and their five grandsons, but also because they knew that Heracles was now guilty of a horrible crime and he would have to be punished. And so Amphitryon went to the oracle at Delphi to consult with Zeus and find out what the punishment for Heracles would be. And he was afraid that the punishment would be death. But instead, he discovered that Zeus knew what had happened. And he knew that the crime wasn't entirely Heracles' fault. But Heracles had committed the crime, so he'd have to be punished. And the punishment was this. The punishment was that Heracles would have to do ten great labors. And those ten great labors would be what got him free from his crime. And that is where we will pick up next time. So, between now and then, the rain is coming. Get inside and find a good story. Bye.